Now you want to install PFSense, the community edition, right? But there is no ISO anymore you can download and just deploy. So how do we deal with that? Let's get into this right after this. Now, a while back, NetGate decided to pull the ISO installer, right? So that's the offline installer for PFSense CE. PFSense CE is the first step. You install that, and after that, you can get a an, uh, license from NetGate and upgrade to PFSense Plus. So that offline installer is gone. There is a online installer. And the way we do this is we need a NetGate account, log into the NetGate portal, and then you need to buy the online installer. It is free. And after starting your virtual machine or your physical machine where you want to install PFSense with that online installer, it will start up, it will connect to the internet and then download the needed packages to deploy the firewall, right? So that's the way it works. And for physical machines, okay, I get it. But in my lab environment, it is a virtual environment and I often need to redeploy PFSense because I mess things up, I install something, I test something, it breaks, and then I need to revert back, right? So there are snapshots, of course, because I am using VMware vSphere as a platform. So I could create snapshots and I often use that as well, but there are times that I want to just reinstall the PFSense firewall itself. And the way I deal with this is I have that online installer and I deploy PFSense once with that online installer and at that moment, I create a snapshot because then the firewall is empty because after the online installer downloads all the files for deploying PFSense, it restarts and then the wizard starts up when you log in to the web interface for management. And that's the same wizard you get, uh, that's the same wizard we have in the previous offline installation uh, part of PFSense. So, let me show you in this video how I deal with that. What are the steps to get that online installer and how to deploy VFSense in a virtual environment, in my case on VMware vSphere, and have that online installer download everything from the internet and deploy the firewall and the state in which I save that firewall, that, that snapshot, so I can refer back to the initial um, the initial deployment, right? The out of the box experience, so to speak. Let's get into that. All right, so this is the download site for PFSense 2.8.0 for the online installer. If you, as you can see here, we are on pfsense.org slash downloads. Let's click on download. And we have to wait for the installer. As you can see here, it is a NetGate installer and the price is $0, right? Because it is still the community edition we will install. And the way this works is it has been um, at this point till until this point is that you download the NetGate installer, you deploy the community edition for PFSense, or you can deploy the plus editions for PFSense. If you use this installer on a physical device, where you have a license purchased already. When it connects to the online depot to download all the packages, it will detect that that physical machine or that virtual machine, which was, which had PFSense Plus earlier, that it has a active license and you will have the option to download the PFSense Plus edition, right? So the installer can now deploy the community edition and also the plus edition if you're entitled to it, or you can just during the installation, you can visit a specific URL and give a hash number of the machine you're installing it on, and then it will activate the plus edition in the backend of NetGate. And from that point on, you can go forward installing the plus edition. I will show you that in the video just in a minute. So again, um, click on that PFSense CE installer. For the image um, type, I will select ISO the AMD64 because I am deploying it on a 64-bit 64 64-bit platform, so that's the one I need. So this is, of course, the ISO I'm using to deploy virtual machines. If you would deploy this on a NetGate appliance, right, or a physical appliance, you can choose to 
download the USB uh, variant of this installer. You can then deploy it on a USB stick, write it with like Rufus or some ISO writer to the USB stick, and then boot up that physical machine from that. I will do the ISO one because I am using this in virtual machines in my lab. So that's the way to go. Now I will tell it to add it to the cart. It has been added. Let's enter the cart. You can see here that it is selected. It still says $0 because that's the way this works now. So I can click on checkout. And now you'll have to wait. And it will tell you your order is free. No payment is required, right? Because this is just the online installer and nothing uh, to pay here. So now that you it will generate the installer. You will get a link in your email as well, where you can download that installation file, that online installer file. It will of course pop up in this browser or to save it on your computer as well. So once that is done, let's go to my vSphere because this is the platform where I am using PFSense in my lab environment. And I am using the community edition, the ZE edition, because that's the version I need in my lab environment. So on my vCenter, when I go to my data store, I have a specific disk. I use it to store ISO files. And this is the NetGate installer you will get from NetGate, right? This is the online installer. You can then just mount this one to a virtual machine. Another option also is, you can see here, I still have the ISO for the previous version of PFSense CE. And that was a offline, a complete offline installer. So you could, of course, in your lab environment, use this ISO to provision a PFSense machine and then immediately upgrade from there to PFSense 2.8. That's an option, of course. But in this video, I'm going to show you how that process works for, for the online installer. So this is the online installer. It's on my depot here as already. So the only thing I need to do is create a virtual machine. So let's go ahead and do that. Tell it I want a new virtual machine. I will give it a name. PFSense YouTube demo and that's fine. Let's go ahead and put it in a cluster. That's my cluster. Let's give it some disk space and create or select a data store. ESX version, that is fine as well. And now I need to select the guest OS family, that's other, and I will select FreeBSD 14 or later. Let's click on next. I will give this two vCPUs and also four gigabytes of memory. Let's make this disk a little bit larger. Let's go for 20 gigabytes. And because this is a lab environment, thin provision is fine. And now I have to assign network interfaces. Of course, this is the online installer. That means that when you deploy this installation on your physical or virtual machine, it needs to connect to the internet. Of course, in your virtual, in your lab environment, your virtual environment, the chances that you have internet available there, those are, uh, well, rather big. That means I will assign a network adapter here with a VLAN I know that has access to the internet. So this is my test lab VLAN. This is the, the VLAN I will use or dedicate as a WAN interface in the installer in a minute. So let's select that. The other network interface is a internal only vSwitch. So that means that that will be designated as a LAN interface. So the client device, let's click on data store ISO and go to my data store where I store that ISO for the installer. Again, this is the NetGate installer I'm going to use. Let's click on OK and tell it that it needs to be connected at power on because then it will start from the ISO. And that's basically it. Let's click on finish and wait for the virtual machine to be created. And there we are. So this is the virtual machine. It will boot up from that installer file. Just let's double check that. Click on edit for the VMware hardware. And we can see that that ISO is mounted and it will start up from that. So let's go ahead and power this one up and then collect to the web console. So this is the PFSense installer. You can see it. It is now starting up from the that net installer, right? So that means I will need internet access. And in the lab environment, I have internet access to do this. So let's click on accept to accept the agreement here. 
and we will say we will launch or we will install pfSense from the launcher. So that's okay. Let's select that. Of course, you can do the rescue shell if you need to do rescue operations on a existing pfSense installation. We will not do that. We'll go for install pfSense. Setting up the network to continue the installation. Okay. Click on okay. Now I have two interfaces and these interfaces, they reflect with the interfaces configured on this virtual machine. Let's go back real quick here. And you can see the first adapter, that's the connection to my test lab VLAN. That is the WAN for the PFSense uh, virtual machine. Let's click on it and see what that MAC address is. It ends on B7, right? If we go back to the installer, we can see that B7 is the VMX0 interface. So that's the WAN interface because now we need to select the WAN interface. Let's do that. And when that is, yes, that's correct. I will do the DHCP because I know that DHCP is the way it works in that VLAN. Let's go and proceed with that. And it will try to get a address for, for the WAN interface. It has the address and then it prompts you for the LAN interface. That's the second network adapter on this machine. The second one is connected to that internal vSwitch. This does not have internet access. Um, just to check, this is the MAC address ending at with 5.3. This is that adapter, yes. So this is the LAN, I know for sure. Let's go with OK. And of course, you can do VLAN tagging, etc., etc. here if you need to configure your LAN, uh, VLANs, etc. But that's not what I'm doing here. So I will proceed with the installation. All right. We need to confirm that it is true. The VMX1, that's the second interface on that virtual machine. That's the LAN interface. That is correct. And the first one, that is my WAN interface. Just to make sure that it is correct. Yes, let's continue. If you made a mistake, of course, you can go to assign and configure that again. We will click on continue. It will try to reach the internet and now you can see this is actually the part where it connects to the NetGate server to see if there is a valid PFSense Plus license for this installation. There is not, of course, because this is just a, just a test setup. But if you would do this on a physical machine, for example, and you already had PFSense Plus running there, you needed to redeploy that. The moment it connects to the NetGate infrastructure, the NetGate backend, NetGate will tell it, there is a PFSense Plus license for the machine you want to install it on. So you can go ahead here and install the PFSense Plus edition. For me, it will be install CE, right? If I would want to have PFSense Plus immediately set up during this installation process, I need to visit the URL, which is uh, now displayed here and buy the Plus edition there. Once I do that, if I do a retry validation, it will see that there is a valid license. Of course, that's not the case in this, uh, in this setup. So I will go ahead and click install CE or press enter. Let's see. Yes, we will continue with the installation. ZFS is fine. Let's go ahead. There is no redundancy in the file system on the disks. So this is fine as well. And yes, that is the VMware virtual disk I will be using. That's the 20 gigabyte disk I connected attached to this virtual machine. So click on yes. Am I sure? Yes, I am sure. So now we have to wait. Now at this moment, this screen will start to glitch. At, at least in the virtual environment I'm using this, it will. it is a bit glitchy and it is throwing up some errors. But you can still select the version you need to install, right? If you jump around with the arrow keys on your keyboard, you will have the option to select one of the displayed versions here. I will go ahead and select the current stable version. That's 2.8.0. Let's go with that. And let's wait for it to do its thing. All right, the installation is finished. Let's press on 
enter and then before I click on or enter on reboot I will make sure that that ISO file is actually disconnected so I know for sure that when I enter reboot here I hit reboot the virtual machine will reboot but it will boot from the disk now where pfSense is installed so let's enter reboot and wait for the system to go down and reboot all right the system is booting up now from the disk it was inst it is installed on let's wait for it to boot up and let's see there is a message about VLANs we are not going to do that so as you can see here we are now on that first run first wizard run again right so we need to assign interfaces again for WAN and for LAN so I know that my LAN is VMX0 that's the first one that's the B7 MAC address so let's go back and just make sure that I am correct let's click on edit and make sure that my WAN is the MAC address ending with B7 that is VMX0 so my WAN interface is again VMX0 so my LAN interface is of course VMX1 okay do you want to proceed yes let's do that and let's for the let's wait for the configuration to finish and then we can enter the interface from a browser all right the system is booted up completely let's go to my windows 11 machine that's the machine which is also connected to the internal side the LAN side of this virtual machine right let's see what ip address this network interface has that's perfectly fine that's the ip address on the wan side so let's go to the browser and enter that ip address for the gateway that's 1.1 that's the default ip range it will have on the wan side you can of course reconfigure it from the uh, uh, from the shell but we're going to proceed and now we can log in pfsense with a standard default admin pfsense username password combination so at this point if i you can see that the wizard starts up this is also the same wizard that is that starts up when you had the offline installer so at that at this point the firewall is now in a out of the box condition so to speak like let's click here on close and we are ready to configure this firewall for our purposes so this is the point where I like to just shut down the firewall and create a template for vSphere, right? And that way, if I need to redeploy the firewall or I need another instance, I and I need a clean instance, I don't have to go through that WAN installer, that online installer. I just need to go to my vCenter and look up that template I created and then deploy a new virtual machine from this template, right? So. Now I go back to my vCenter, select that pfSense machine, and I will just shut down. I will just power off and off it goes. The machine has been powered off. So at this point, I just click on that machine and I will say that I want to create a template or convert it to a template, right? So this is the way I deal with my pfSense with pfSense installations in my lab environment this gives me the flexibility i need without having to go through that online installation wizard every time and that's the way i deal with new pfSense ce installations in my lab environment i ran through that online installation wizard one time now everything has been downloaded that means i just create a template for that virtual machine with pfSense in it and every time i deploy a new virtual machine using that template I get a pfSense, fully installed pfSense machine waiting for me on that first run wizard so I can start configuring it for my needs and purposes. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something new in this video. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons below the video. That helps my channel a lot and also you will get a notification when I post a new video. For now, take care and see you in the next video. Bye.